Okay. So now we will go a little deep into the semicircular canals first. In the semicircular canal, we actually saw that there is a bulging. You can see there is a bulge here, right? And again, there is a bulge here and one here, right? So each semicircular canal is actually having a kind of uh, bulging at one end, not on the other end. Okay. If you're looking at the anterior semicircular canal, the anterior and the posterior are connected. Okay. They are connected on the other end before they connect to the utricle. And individually, they are connecting the utricle through this side and this side. Okay. So when they are connecting to the utricle individually, they are having a bulging. And in the horizontal also, one side is bulging, okay? Which means a point where the anterior, posterior, and the lateral ones join on the other side, there is no bulging. But when it is on the front side, towards the saccular side, you have three bulgings from the three semicircular canals. And that bulging is called as the ampulla, okay? That bulging is called as ampulla, okay? Inside the ampulla, this is like your. Uh, okay, so this is like your organ of corti. Within the organ of corti, you are having all the hair cells, everything, right? So the ampulla contains everything. Okay, the ampulla contains two things crista and cupula. Okay, the the ampulla is like your organ of corti, as I told you before. The crista is the basilar membrane. What does the basilar membrane do in your uh, cochlea? It holds the hair cells, right? So you have your crista here. The crista actually holds the hair cells towards itself. And then your cupula, which acts like a tectorial membrane. What happens when we, uh, uh, in the cochlea, the tectorial membrane actually go uh, the, the hair cells go and then insert it into the tectorial membrane and the tectorial membrane when it moves or the when when the hair cells move the stereocilia open and close okay so you have your tectorial membrane helping in the opening and closing of the ion channels in the hair cells likewise you have your cupola here which is a gelatinous substance. It's not exactly like the tectorial membrane. All these are examples to understand, but they, the characteristics are not same. This is not a membrane. This is actually a gelatinous material. Okay, this is like your jelly. So inside the jelly, you have the hair cells inside here. Okay. This is a little bit closer view. So you are looking this is your cupola the gelatinous structure the l1 and the r is your crista ampullaris crista is also called as crista ampullaris because it's inside the crista okay so uh, inside the ampulla so you have your hair cells embedded in the crista and then you have your cupola on it sitting on it okay so uh, we have removed the ampulla we are looking at only the crista and the cupola Okay, you can really appreciate that the hair cells, how the hair cells are sitting inside the cupola. Okay, when the cupola moves left and right, the hair cells will also move with it left and right. Okay, and then it will send the responses. When, when it is moving in an excitatory direction, then we are going to have excitatory responses. When it is moving opposite, which means top taller uh, stereocilia on the shorter stereocilia, then we are going to have inhibitory responses. Okay, fine. We have two sides here. One is your, okay. We're looking at this picture, the C1. We have two different sides. One is your semicircular side. The other one is your utricular side, okay? Yeah, so you're looking at this one, okay?
just a minute. Okay, so when you have a bulging, you have two sides to it. One on the top side, you have your semicircular side, the rest of the semicircular canal. And on the other side, you have your utricle, okay? So you have the ampulla, the cupola is actually sitting like this. You have a cupola sitting like this, okay? So you have one side one, and then you have utricular side, okay? You, uh, you understand this? You have your cupola like this. So you have your one side towards the rest of the semicircular canal and you have your other side as utricular side. Okay. Having seen this, we will go into the... Okay. Now we can try to understand that if a person is rotating towards the right side, the endolymph will actually flow on the left side. How? If you're taking a glass of water, okay, and you're trying to move the glass towards the right side, Actually, the fluid will not come with you towards the right side. It will first go towards the left side and then it will come towards the right side. Okay. If, if you want, you can take a glass of water and you can actually try moving it. Or if you have a water can, you can do it. If you are trying to move on the right side, it, the water will, fall on, will move towards the left side, opposite direction. Okay. Which means it will lag behind. It is called as lagging behind. The term used is lagging behind. The motion okay for example if the person is moving towards right side the movement is going to be the indolent movement is going to be on the left side okay in this example you can see this i'm, I'm speaking about this c abc in this i'm speaking about the c1 the person is actually rotating towards the left side okay and the endolymph will move towards the opposite direction, which is left side, right? I mean, the right side, sorry. The cupola actually is moved from the resting position, which is center, and it is moved towards the right side, okay? When the utricle is on the right side, then we will get excitatory responses. If the utricle is on the left side, then we are going to get Sorry, uh, when the when the imagine the utricle is on the right side and uh, the movement is towards the right side, so we are getting an excitatory response. Okay, so we have your utricle here. Okay, so let's imagine this is utricle and the other side is the rest of the semicircular canal. Okay, so if we have movement of the endolymph towards the right side, towards the utricular side, we are going to get excitatory responses, okay? When it is moving on the other side, we are going to get inhibitory responses, okay? Let's imagine in the same example, if the person is trying to move on the right side, the endolymph will move towards the left side, okay? Which means away from the utricle, because of which we are going to get inhibitory responses, which means if one ear is sending excitatory responses, the other ear is going to send inhibitory responses. Okay, we will tell, I will tell you how it happens. Okay. Fine. So we had our uh, responses from two We had our responses from the two semicircular canals, right? Two horizontal canals are paired together, which means if I'm turning towards a right side, the right side semi horizontal semicircular canal will send excitatory responses, and the left side 
semicircle horizontal semicircular canal will send inhibitory responses okay which means which side whichever side i am moving that side will produce excitatory responses and the other side will send inhibitory responses and the brain perceives that i have turned towards the right side only if we have two inputs one from the right side semicircular canal and the left side semicircular other from the left side semicircular canal so without that it is very difficult for us to understand which side the head is moving okay if you look at the other two anterior and posterior the anterior semicircular canal of one side is paired with the posterior semicircular canal on the other side okay for example you can see this is the anterior semicircular canal right the left anterior canal okay if you look at this plane the parallel plane is actually this one right what is there parallel to it right posterior canal okay so you have one anterior canal being parallel to the other posterior canal right so you have the right anterior canal and what is parallel to it is left posterior canal okay so the pairing if there is a movement the signal is sent as pairs from both the ears okay when there is a horizontal movement okay the horizontal movement is called as yaw y a w okay in most of the books you will see yaw which means horizontal movements horizontal movements right and left turning towards right and left okay so your horizontal movements like this one your right and left it is called as yaw okay your horizontal semicircular canal is sending the responses if i'm turning on the right side this ear is sending excitatory responses and this side is sending inhibitory responses okay if i'm doing like this front and back this is called as pitching p i t c h pitching okay here one semicircular canal is sending okay is sending your excitatory response and the other side the posterior canal is sending the inhibitory responses okay i am moving like this now tilting right and left okay this is called as rolling okay here one semicircular canal if i am doing like this okay so the right sem uh, posterior semicircular canal is sending excitatory response and the other side the posterior canal or anterior canal the posterior canal of one side is paired with the responses from the anterior semicircular canal on the other side so the anterior semicircular canal on the left side will be sending inhibitory responses okay so understand that right and the left is connected and both horizontal like right left are connected on the anterior part your anterior semicircular canal and the posterior semicircular canal is paired okay it's like both are in the parallel location your anterior is like this and here the posterior is like this okay so both are in the same if i have to take this side posterior it is like this and anterior is like this okay okay we have almost dealt with uh, the semicircular canals is there any doubt any doubts in the semicircular canal
Okay. So there is a question like uh, how many organ of corte on the basilar membrane of one ear? Actually, uh, I, the basilar membrane, I gave it as an example. Actually, there is no basilar membrane or the organ of corte in the vestibular, the semicircular canals. What we have in there is your cupola and cristae, all the two things. Okay. How many do we have is we have only one, one cupola on one semicircular canal. When we take two ears, we have two cupola. Okay, on the one side, we have three cupola, which means each one for semicircular canals. And the other side, we have three. So in the whole of the head, we have six cupola and six cristae. In the cristae, we have so many hair cells embedded in it. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, regarding the eyeball movement, we will come next.